Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is May 8744. So today, guys, we'll be doing my hot takes video part two, guys. Remember, guys, I did part one a few months ago. Now I'll be doing a part two for this one, guys. So please remember to like and subscribe, of course. And since we got like around 20 comments, I expect for us to get 20 likes. 20 likes. That's the like target for today's video. And remember, guys, I'm going to be reacting to you guys' takes, whether I agree or not. And yeah, like I said, it's going to be simple. And also, let me know in the comments below, guys. Do you guys want as this as like a monthly edition or you don't, you guys don't really care? Maybe I'll do a poll after this video is out. Um, and you guys can let me know in the, uh, the community tab if you guys want it. This is a monthly thing or only every few months. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So let's start with the first take we got here from Slither. Slither on says, is this a hot take or normal? Salah would leave in the summer just to make room for a younger Kiesa. Otherwise, he would stay. Um, this is an interesting one. Now, personally, for me, I do think Kiesa is going to be a solid replacement. I think that is what Liverpool is planning for, is that this will be probably Salah's last season. And I do think this will be Salah's last season. And Kiesa will come in, ha you know, be a bench player, you know, come off the pitch and, you know, you know, have an impact, and the next season become a regular starter. So, I don't think it's a really a hot take. Um, so they're Ion. I think this is a kind of an expected one. Um, and yeah, I, I do think I do think Kiesa will be the solid replacement. So, thank you for your comment. Moving to the next one, we got here from Matt. Matt's Attack Nine says the 2027 Women and World Cup Brazil will be more exciting than the 2026 World Cup. The last Women's Euros and the last two Women's World Cups broke records, including for both attendance and viewership. Right now, women's football is peaking and striving, whilst the next men's tournament has unpopular change and will have bigger quantity of uninteresting games. Um, I do see where you're coming from, Matt, and I do kind of somewhat, somewhat kind of understand what you're saying, that the women's, World Cup, women's football is, you know, it is improving. It is in improving everything. For me, it doesn't matter how much women's football improves. The men's will always be better. It's just a simple fact. There's more people that watch the men's men's World Cup than the women's, and this is into. I'm not trying to disrespect the uh, the uh, women's football whatsoever. Of course, the women's football is still very important. I still, I still do. You know, pay attention to it, especially for the World Cup in particular. It's just the men's will always be a bit higher viewed. There's going to be more tense for the men's World Cup. There's going to be more viewership. Sure, the World Cup format is getting changed, which isn't really ideal. At the same time, though. We're adding more diversified nations. We're adding more African nations in the mix. We're adding more Asian nations. And I think, who knows, maybe these Asian and African nations can, like, change it up a bit. You know, it's not like we're getting, um, and only three more European teams are added, which isn't that much, to be honest, consider considering they were already at 13. So I do see where you're coming from, Matt. And um, and I, I personally, I'm one of those people that didn't like the 30. I actually wanted to keep the format as it is. I don't really like 48 teams. I think 32 is fine as it is. Um, but I can see where you're coming from, man. So, personally, for me, I don't agree with your take. Um, but who knows, man? Maybe it, w it may not be as good. Because remember, guys, the Copa America this year wasn't that greatly hosted. But we have to keep in mind, guys, um, the World Cup is going to be with FIFA, not with Condable. So, I do think the World Cup will be better. So, if you're, if you're also going by what happened this year's Copa America, that's also a fair um, assumption. But I, like I said, I, I think the men's will always be better. I think the men's will always be better. And I think most people will agree. Next comment we got here from Tari Joe Otama says, Jared is the most overrated player in Premier League history. Okay. Now, this is a bit of a harsh one. Because I understand people are saying that Jared is overrated because how you're such an amazing player for one of the biggest clubs in England and not won a Premier League title. But here's the thing, guys. Liverpool only won one Premier League title in the, ninth, in the modern Premier League era. And sure. Gerard is responsible for what he did. Obviously, we know that famous slip he had against Chelsea. That is memorable, of course. Well, infamously, I suppose you can say. For me, I don't think he's the most overrated. I feel like he still has a large contribution for Liverpool. He's one of Liverpool's best players of all time. Sure, may not have the accolades and everything. But for me, what you do as a player means more than your trophies. Trophies, for me, is an, an addition, right? And at the end of the day, your contribution means more. So, um... Like I said, now, is he, like, the best Premier League midfielder of all time? Now, that's debatable. That's debatable. You can have your debate, you know. But I, I for me, uh, Tari, I think it's a bit harsh um, on this one because just because he did win a Premier League means he's overrated, which I think is incredibly harsh. Now, is he the best midfielder in the Premier League? Mm, that that That's debatable. I'll let you guys debate that. I, I can't really tell you if you guys, you know, you got, like, Skulls, that's up there. You got Lampard. But no, that's up to a personal preference. 
But for me, he is not the most overrated player in Premier League history. So I actually disagree with this take. I think there have been players that are played for the top teams that have are more overrated than Gerard. So for me, I don't agree with this take. Next up, Treo69 says, Inter under Mourinho was the best UCL team ever. Okay. Um, this is the interesting one. I would say... <sighs> it's a good shout. It's a good shout. I do if I do think it's in contention. Is it the best UCL team, though? I, I, I do think Barca 2011 is clear. And I would probably say Madrid 2017 is clear. Those are two that comes to my at the top of my head. Um, so for me, I don't agree with this take. I'm sorry. I, I do see where you're coming from, though. It is impressive. And to see what Mourinho Inter did winning that trouble in 2010, it's incredible. Um, it, it's probably one of the best for Serie A teams. I'll, I, I can maybe agree with that. But all the teams, all the top teams, probably not. I probably won't agree with it. But uh, like I said, I think Barcelona's 11 is better. And I think Madrid 2017 is better. But um. Yeah, it's a good shout, man. It's a good shout. Um, definitely for this one. And um, yeah, I can see where you're coming from, Shreyo, but um, unfortunately, I disagree with your take. But um, thank you for your comment, Ben. Good, good. It's it's an interesting one. Next up from TTNS13, it says the Arsenal Invincible team is one of the most overrated teams in football history. Only won one trophy and got over like ten draws. People say, "Oh, we'll never see another team be invincible." You can also say the same thing about getting hundred points, which is more impressive. Okay, now this is a very interesting one. And I actually, I believe I selected this thumbnail in particular um, in my thumbnail. Because I wanted to see how people react to this one. Um, see, I can understand where you're coming from, TTNS. And you are partially correct that the as good as the Arsenal team was, they didn't even reach 90 points. Like, how is that amazing Arsenal team didn't even reach 90, and, and 90 points is insane when they went invincible? I believe they got not, uh, 88 points, which is insane. But for me, Going invincible is still very impressive. It's still very impressive. There's only been one team in the Premier League history that's gone invincible. You would think Man City have done it, given how dominant they've been recently. Or Manchester United have done it in the early 2000s. Right? So, for me, it doesn't matter how many points you got as an invincible team. Going invincible is still a very difficult achievement. And we just saw how difficult it was for Leverkusen to go invincible in the Bundesliga. They had to score a lot of last-minute uh, goals to either win the game or draw the game. So, it's, it's a difficult one. And see, 100 points is impressive. I'm not saying it isn't impressive. But for me, which is better? 100 points or Invincible? I'm taking Invincible all the day. Because with 100 points, it depends on how many games there are in the league. So, for example, if you're if there's a league with like only like 10 teams, you can't go 100 points. You know. Whereas if you say you're Invincible, you can say that for any team, any league. It doesn't, ha you don't have to, it doesn't matter about how many teams are in the league. So... For me, man, I like I said, it's a difficult one because I do see where you're coming from, and I do think 100 points is an incredible achievement, like what Man City did, I believe it was the 17-18 season. I still think, though, going invincible is better. I still think going invincible is better because you can say that with any team. Any team that goes invincible, it is a very difficult achievement, very, very hard to do. There's been a lot of teams that have gone on to win the league and only won, lost one game. Lost one game, and every other game was a win. It, it's so free. It's so tough, man. It's so tough. And that's why, for me, we have to respect Arsene Wenger for the Premier League trophy in 2004. We have to respect it. Because, like I said, that is going to be a difficult achievement. And I don't think anyone, any team in our next couple of years will break that. So, I understand what you're saying, TTNS. And I do I do partially agree with you that at 100 points, um, it, going invincible is a bit overrated. But at the same time, though, it's still going invincible. And, right? and also, here's another thing he was also saying. Only one trophy. Yes, that's also true. As good as the Arsenal 2004 team was, they didn't do well in the Champions League. I believe they got knocked down the quarterfinals against Chelsea. But at the same time, we could also say, make the same argument for Man City. They uh, lost in the Champions League quarterfinals. I believe it was Liverpool. Now, I believe they did win the Carabao Cup and you know FA Cup and stuff like that. But for me, Champions League and League is the primary thing. So for me, like I said, I understand where you're coming from. It is a very interesting take, and I, it's very interesting. But for me, like I said, guys, I'm still taking Invincible any day over 100 points. Um, 100 points. 100 points is also very difficult, too. It's also very insane, very, very difficult. But for me, I think a hundred, Invincible is still a, a better achievement. And remember, when you go Invincibles, you got a special trophy. When you get 100 points, you don't get a special trophy. So that's also another thing I'll say. Moving to the next one, we got here from Tenna Diane says, No matter what country you are, failing to qualify for the World Cup is not a success. It's a failure. 
San Marino not qualified World Cup failure. Kuwait not qualified World Cup failure. Ghana not qualified World Cup failure. Montserrat not qualified for World Cup failure. Solomon Islands qualified for World Cup success. Mm, okay, now this is a very interesting one Tana Dida brings up. And I, I do think context kind of is in consideration with this question. So it depends which, because for me, I kind of agree with what you're saying, but kind of don't agree. Because I think it depends on which context you are from. Like, for example, you were bringing up San Marino. San Marino are qualified World Cup. I wouldn't say it's a failure because we didn't have X. We didn't expect San Marino to qualify for the World Cup. We didn't. Right? Most of us didn't expect San Marino to qualify for the World Cup. So them not qualifying, it, it is a failure, but it's not that huge of a failure. Like, it's not that huge of a failure. So for me, it depends which, it depends on how big the nation is and the confederation. So, for example, USA not making the World Cup 2018 was a failure because USA is one of the best nations in North America. And then um, Italy not making the World Cup is a failure, right? But for nations like Turkey, for nations like um, uh, Honduras, I don't think it's as big of a failure as those because expectations isn't there. So I think expectation is key with this question. And I think it depends on which country you're from exactly. So, like I said, if you're from, um, if you're from USA, not qualifying for World Cup is a disaster because we're one of the best nations in the region. Whereas if you're from Panama, it's not the same because Panama doesn't have the infrastructure or the resources compared to America and the CONCACAF, and they're not perceived as highly as America is in CONCACAF. So for me, I can I kind of partially agree, partially disagree with you, Tenet Item, because it is a failure, like I said, but I think expectation means more. I think expectation means more than the day rather than them qualify or not qualify. But yeah, very interesting comment. Very interesting one. Uh, next up is Go Zombie. So the current Barcelona is the best team in the world. Um, Go Zombie. Um, this is very biased. We're not the best team in the world. I still think Man City is the best team in the world. Now, if you're going by in terms of form, Barcelona is one of the best informed teams in the world. But we have to keep in mind, it's only been four games. And we have to keep in mind, not all leagues have played four games. Also, it's only been one month. So... Let's see, man. Let's see how long we can continue our unbeaten streak for. And for, like I said, for uh, Go Zombie, we'll treat, see the true Barca in the Champions League because that's where we always struggle in. La Liga, we don't really struggle in that much in recent years. It's just the Champions League is where you've been a laughing stock. So, for me, uh, if we are really that good of a team as you're making it out to be, then we have to do well in the Champions League. We have to go unbeaten in those fixtures. So, yeah. Thank you for the comment, Go Zombie. I respectfully disagree. Next up it is FCB Cooley says Yamal should win Ballon d'Or. Ah oh, man. Um, unfortunately, see the issue for Yamal is the Champions League thing. That's the only thing I could criticize Yamal for the Champions League. But is, you can't even really blame that on him because that's more on Araujo's fault. That's more on Barca's fault, right? Because Yamal did everything he could. It's just the team let him down. And this is the problem with this whole Ballon d'Or thing. It's more about your team performances than your individual performances. Because we could, guys, we could have had a scenario where if Yamal had won the Champions League or made the Champions League final and won the Euros, he could have won the Ballon d'Or. I just feel like for me, it's not realistic. It's not realistic. Now, he should be in the top 10. He should definitely be top 10 for sure, without a doubt. Should he win? Uh, I'd probably say no. I'd probably say no. But he's definitely in contention. He's definitely in contention. But like I said earlier, guys, the only thing you could criticize him for is the Champions League debacle. And you can't really, really criticize Yamal for that one. That's more on Barca's fault. That's more around the Rajas' fault in particular. So, yeah. But, yeah, it's interesting what you said there. That's be cool. But, uh, yeah, I would love to. Would I love to see Yamal win the ball? Of course I would love to see it. But is it going to happen? Probably not. And do I want it? To, uh, of course I want it to happen. But being objective, it sh it, he shouldn't win the ball. Door. It, should be, it should be either Vinicius. It should be Vinicius, in my opinion. It should be Vinicius, in my opinion, because he's he had he was so integral to Real Madrid winning the Champions League, and he was Real Madrid's best player, in my opinion, throughout the season. So, yeah. And as let's move to the next one. Uh, look what the Ethiopian uh, nationalist says: Saul is the best prim winger of all time. Now, I don't think it's a hot take. I don't think this is. He's definitely in contention. Now, is he outright the best? Mm, that is debatable. That is debatable because people are going to say, "What about Ronaldo?" Uh, Ronaldo's a good shout. What about Eden Hazard? Actually, I do think Salah's clear of Eden Hazard, but yeah. For me, Salah is in contention. Now, is he outright the best? That That's up for you guys to debate. But he is in contention. Like You have to, at the very least, put him on your bench if you're going to do an all-time 11. If you're going to do an all-time 11, Salah has to bare minimum make the bench. 
Now it does go in the eleven. That's hot top. Like, is it, like, like, so you have like, you got Ronaldo, you have Eden Hazard. As there, um, I'm trying to think of some other players that also come to mind. Those are the two players that come to mind. So, you know, and for me, Salah, he's so consistent, right? So yeah, you can make an argument. You can make an argument. He goes in the Premier League winner. He is the best Premier Premier League winner, winger of all time. You can make an argument. So I don't think it's really a hot take, Liquid. Um, and I actually, I could kind of make an argument for that. So I would. I, so for me, I, I I don't think it's a hot take. Next up, Murmur five seven eight says United will win the league in the next three seasons. Ah, uh, um. So let's see. We're two thousand twenty four now. Two thousand twenty seven. Do I think United will win the league in the next three seasons? I think. I. That's tough because I could kind of see where you're coming from because Ineos has been back in United for so long, and the United is starting to kind of seem like they're starting to kind of improve, but I don't think United will be able to win the league that soon. I think if for United to win the league, it will take at least five seasons. Now, I think United will maybe be able to do a title challenge in the next few seasons. I do think it's possible. Definitely not this season. This season won't happen, but maybe next season and the season after a title challenge. Right? And I think United might go through what Arsenal is doing. Right? You know how Arsenal consistently got top four? And I think United needs to do that now. As I try to get consistently get top four, and then after a few seasons, like this is a game top four, then push for the title. Like take it gradually, one step at a time, kind of like what Arsenal's doing, right? And I think United have to do something similar to what Arsenal's doing. So, do I think it's realistic? Probably not. I'd probably say no. Um, but it it can it happen? Yeah, it can happen because to be honest with you, we don't. It's hard to say in three years' time. We don't know what's going to happen in three years. We don't know Pep is going to stay. We don't know who's going to. We don't know which manager's going to stay. Which manager's going to go? So. It's really hard to say, but if I had to give a prediction right now that the next three seasons United will win a Premier League, I'd probably say likely no. But can they t- challenge title challenge? Yes, and I think they should be title challenging. I think this season and then season after, if they can consistently get top four, then they should push for a title challenge the third season. I think United needs to, for now, try to consistently get top four. Consistently get top four, then aim for the title. Next up, Brandon Blanco said the Premier League is the real Farmers League, not League One. I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree with this take. Because Premier League, for me, has been a joke of a league in the last few years. You've had only two winners. And only Liverpool is the only other team to stop Man City. Guys, Man City could have done six in a row, guys. I'm sorry, five in a row. So for me, man, it's not competitive. And this league isn't competitive. Um, in terms of title race, it isn't competitive. And, in fact, I believe of all the top five leagues, this is the only league where we have the same winners for the last couple of seasons. Even League on had a different winner a few seasons ago with uh, P- uh, Lille. And then obviously Leverkusen, right? So for me, yeah, Premier League is a real Farmers League. I, I do agree with that. I do agree with that. In terms of the top five leagues, it is the pro- Farmers League right now at the moment. Uh, <clears throat> Patrick, the coolest fan, says, Foden will do better than Saka. Okay, this is actually one. Who is better, Foden or Saka? Now, in terms of player, I do think Foden is more talented than Saka. I do think he is. And in terms of club level, I do think Foden will be better. However, in terms of international, I think Saka is clear Foden. We've seen Foden be really bad at his last Euros. And we saw Saka, how good he was last Euros. You know, he scored that goal against Switzerland. We saw what he did the World Cup as well. Foden, for me, I think this is going to be the thing with these two players. I think Foden will be a better club player, and I think Saka will be a better international player. That's what I think it's going to come down to. So, for me, Patrick, is this a hot take? Hmm... I don't, it is kind of, I don't really think it's a hot take that much, but I can see what you're saying. So, yeah. Next up, it is the Immense Mini Poet says Neymar Jr. is the best Brazilian player post World Cup 2010, both in Europe and international. I agree. And this shouldn't be a hot take. This shouldn't be a hot take, guys, because Neymar for me has consistently delivered for Brazil. It's just the problem with Brazil is that the other players in the team were such bums, they let him down. Look at 2018 World Cup. They were they can see that own goal. Fernandinho, 2022 World Cup. Marquinhos, 2014 World Cup, 7-1. Like, Brazil, uh, Neymar has done everything he can. It's just the other players have let him down, which is why Neymar hasn't been able to win a trophy, right? And that's my issue with Neymar. That's the biggest issue with Neymar is that he just has, doesn't have any trophies with Brazil. And he was just born in the wrong era. If he was born in the early 2000s and it was that amazing, Oh man, he would be amazing. Like he would be one of the he would be he would he would be a star for that 2002. He would, he would be in squad for 2002. 
maybe one of the few Brazil players from this current team that would be a, a roster player for the 2002 World Cup, right? And I just think for me, his international achievements is very, it's very sad because I do think Neymar has been very good. And we've seen how bad Brazil have been without Neymar. And it almost feels like Neymar is carrying this team, right? Without Neymar, this Brazil team looks really mid. Uh, we've been seeing it right now in the qualifiers. As for the Europe thing, yes, I also agree. Neymar consistently has delivered you goals and assists. It's just the problem is that he's been so injury prone that he hasn't been that good in the Champions League. And the thing is for Neymar is that that 2020 Champions League, it should have been his. That was Neymar's redemption. If Neymar had won the Champions League, um, it would have been a very different combo. And sure, you can maybe blame Neymar for leaving Barcelona and going to PSG, which was kind of a stupid move. But we have to keep in mind, we have to go back in context. We have to go back, because we're using hindsight. We have to go back to 2017. We all just, most of most, most Neymar fans were happy with the move because Neymar wanted to be the main guy, and he just couldn't be the main guy at Barcelona, obviously. So he had to be the main guy. And the only place he could have been the main guy for was at PSG. So, and let's be real, Neymar delivered for PSG. Neymar did everything he could. It's just the PSG players were bumped. They, they, they let him down consistently and everything. And, yeah, so for me, for Neymar, as I said, man, see, the thing with Neymar is that he, the expectation and the talent level is we expect so much more, but Neymar underachieved in terms of titles. But in terms of, like, consistency, his, like, goal scoring, his assist making, that's very good. It's very good. So... I just think Neymar, for me, he needs those trophies. He just needs those trophies, those big trophies like the World Cup, Copa America, and the Champions League. I think if he had won those trophies um, post-2010, well, well, really post-2015, I guess you could say, for the Champions League, then we would have a very different combo, right? And the only other player that can maybe come close to this conversation is Vinicius, but we have seen how bad Vinicius has been for Brazil. He's not been good. And guys, I don't care how many trophies Vinicius wins for, um, for Real Madrid. Vinicius will never surpass him anymore. In terms of player, he will never be better. Okay? And this is the thing as football fans we have to stop doing. We can't be using trophies to determine which player is better. This is also another stupid thing. So for me, I don't think it's a hot take. In fact, I actually agree with this take. This is a very uh, true take. And um, I just hope for Neymar, man, I really hope he could win a international trophy, preferably the World Cup. Because if he wins a World Cup, then we, could all, we can kind of forgive uh, for what's happened the last few years. But yeah, like I said, man, very interesting one. Neymar Jr., man. Next up, from random Bulgarian map, it says, Mbappe will struggle at until Madrid takes him a striker and Leipzig will the league. Okay, so let's look at first part. I do agree with that take. I do think Mbappe is going to struggle. And we've seen it already. Mbappe has been struggling at Real Madrid. It took on a few games for him to score. And I feel like if you want to get the best out of Mbappe, you have to play him as a left winger. You can't play him as a right winger. You can't play him as a striker. As for the Leipzig winning the league, that is definitely a hot take. That is definitely a hot take, and I don't agree with that. I don't think Leipzig is as consistent as uh, Lever uh, Bayern Munich and Leverkusen, and I just I just feel like for me Le Leipzig will inevitably drop off. They're a good team; they're going to keep it close, and I do think they'll push it all the way. But I think they'll fall off sometime in like March, maybe February, and they're going to eventually drop and you know succumb to like a third or fourth place finish. Terry Colorell says Liverpool will either win the Premier League, okay. Miss out all European football next season. Okay, this is a very interesting take. Um, do I think Liverpool is going to win the Premier League? No, I don't think so. And will they miss out all European football next season? That is definitely possible. But I think for Liverpool to miss out entirely in Europe, they would have to finish eighth. Do I think Liverpool will finish eighth? Mm, I think that's a bridge too far. I do think Liverpool is better because I'm looking at the other teams around them. You got Man City. Man City are clearly better. Arsenal. You know, Arsenal, Liverpool. I would say Arsenal is better, but Liverpool is there. Liverpool is better than United. Liverpool is better than Spurs. Liverpool is better than Chelsea. Liverpool is better than Villa. Liverpool is better um, than Wolves, West Ham. Like, Liverpool is like the third best team in the Premier League, in my opinion. Third best. So, for me, uh, Cherry Colorell, I don't actually agree with this take. But who knows? If Liverpool, I'll put it this way. If Liverpool goes on a lot of losing streak, then it, it can't happen. But I think if, if they keep winning and not drop too much points throughout the way, then I think they should have enough to get top four. Liverpool should have enough for a top four. Now, will they have? Will they mount a title challenge? Probably not. I don't think they'll mount a title challenge. But they should have enough to get top four. So I don't really agree with this take. But who knows? It can't happen. It can't happen. Um, you know, we've seen Liverpool, I think it was a few seasons ago, we all expected Liverpool to get um, a challenge for the title, and they ended up getting to Europa League. So even at that season, Liverpool still got Europa League. 
So we haven't seen Liverpool miss out on Europe for so long. And I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. <clears throat> Next up from Sammy Kiani, 94, 944, says, If the Islamic Revolution had not happened, Iran would have hosted a World Cup by now. Mm, yeah, that is possible. That is possible. Um, <clears throat> that could have happened. But here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. Which World Cup would they have hosted? <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Because I'm looking at the Asian countries that host the World Cup. We got, um, Aust- uh, so we got Japan, North, uh, South Korea, and then obviously Qatar, and then we're uh, potentially going to get Saudi in the future. Yeah, Iran could have hosted a World Cup. Iran could have hosted a World Cup. I, I think that is possible. I think they could have because I do think Iran have the infrastructure. I think they have the facilities. They have the resources. I think they could have. It's just the Islamic Revolution had to occur, and you know, that is what it is. So yeah, I agree with you, Sam Kiani. Low Mayor 015 says, Artagula will win more trophies than Yamal. Ah, man. I don't want to get to this Artagula or Yamal debate because I think it's a pointless debate. I think Yamal is clear of Artagula. Uh, Yamal is a starter for real, for Barca. Artagula is not even a starter for Real Madrid. So I don't even think it's debatable. Now, will he win more trophies? Well, let's be real. Real Madrid is expected to win more trophies than <clears throat> Barcelona this season. They're expected to. We expect Real Madrid to the very least win the league title with that insane super team they have. Maybe even the Champions League. Whereas at Barca, we don't expect them to win any trophies. Maybe the Copa del Rey, right? So, and for me, like I said, guys, you cannot be using trophies to compare which player is better. Oh, for example, look, Benzema has won five to four Champions League. Suarez has won one, so Benzema is clear. No, I don't care how many trophies you win. It's about how good you are for the team. And I do think Suarez, he has been more consistent than Benzema for his entire career, I'd say. So, <clears throat> if you're going to say that Art- <clears throat> excuse me. Now, Artagula should win more trophies than you all. It should happen, and I would agree with that. But if you're saying this as a way to justify that Artagula is better than you all, that's stupid. You have to go by what you do, what your contributions are to the team. So, yeah, there's my two cents left. Um, or just to rest of AC, uh, 750 says, Vinny's a system player and mostly a pace merchant. Ooh, um, he might be a system player. I can maybe agree with that. I don't think he's a pace merchant. I don't think he's a pace merchant. I do think Vinicius is not a pace merchant. I think it's a bit harsh. A bit bridge too far. Uh, but here's the thing, guys. Brazil are down so bad at the moment that obviously Vinicius is been terrible. But do Brazil... But the thing is, Brazil are down so bad that you can't... Of course, Vinicius has to be blamed. But it's not all on Vinicius. The whole team looks dysfunctional. The attack looks really bad. And I think for Vinicius, he might be a system. He, he might need a particular system. Because we saw at Real Madrid how, how Ancelotti got the best out of Vinicius. We didn't see Vinicius this amazing under Zanini and Zidane. Once Ancelotti came in, he gave him the freedom, gave him the license to be more expressive, more get more freedom. And we see Vinicius be one of the best players at Real Madrid. Probably one of the best players in the world for club level. Dorival hasn't been able to do that. So maybe maybe you are right to some extent. But like I said, it's hard to know, man. It's hard to know because, like I said, Brazil is such a terrible team right now that maybe maybe Brazil just need a manager switch and he can perform. But then at the same time, if you need a manager switch, then you are kind of a system player. So it's a very interesting one. Very interesting. Well, like I said, excuse me. Like I said, let's see what let's see let, let let's see how long it takes. Let because like I said, we'll, we'll see the next uh, World Cup. We'll see the next World Cup how Vinicius is. And if Vinicius is still struggling, then you might be right. But I don't agree he's a pace merchant. I don't agree with that part. APEG one hundred says Frankie Dion shouldn't be playing for Barcelona anymore. I agree with this take. I agree with this take because I do think Frankie Dion has been very underwhelming to Barcelona. He's not lived up to his potential, what we expected at Ajax, and he's just not been the same. Now I'm willing to give him one. <coughs> excuse me. I'm willing to give him one last chance at Barcelona with Hansi Flick, and if Hansi Flick can get the bounce out of him, then we're all good. But if, if he doesn't perform under Hansi Flick, then I think we need to sell. Him. We need to sell him. So I'm giving. I'm willing to give him one last chance, but this is it. This is the last chance. No more chances after this one. So let's see, man. Let's see. Uh, then um, we got from Pookie says Chelsea would have been a better team last season if they had re. Uh, rehabilitated uh, Lukaku back to the side as our main striker. Um, I I kind of see what you're saying, Pookie, but here's the thing. I don't think Lukaku just was going to work out for Chelsea. I just don't think it was ever going to work out. Because I just think Lukaku, for me, 
it just it's just he's just, I just don't think he was a, I just don't think he would have succeeded here. And I think for me, Lukaku should have just stayed at Inter. That was his big mistake. His arrogance got too ahead of him. He was saying that, oh, I'm better than Lewandowski. I'm better than um, Suarez and these kind of players. Came to Chelsea, wanted to come here because, you know, obviously Chelsea was the previously player, and it just didn't work out, you know. And, l- and like I said, a lot of times in life, you don't get the Disney story. You don't get the Disney story. You don't get to go back to your former team and succeed. It just doesn't work out. So I understand what you're saying, Pookie, that, you know, I, I do believe you're one of uh, Lukaku's biggest fans. Personally, for me, I don't agree. But who knows? Maybe Lukaku, because to be fair, Nico Jackson wasn't really that great. So if it's between Lukaku and Nico Jackson, I'm taking Lukaku any day over Nico Jackson. So, but at the same time, though, I don't think Lukaku would have been that much better. Like, he could have been better, but I don't think he would have been that. I don't think he would have been able to get Chelsea to the Champions League. I don't think he would have been able to get Chelsea a fifth place finish. I think, I don't, it's hard to say, but I don't think he would have been able to be that amazing. Because like I said, I just think, for me, the system at Inter was the perfect system. And I think him and Lotaro, Inter was the perfect system. Conte got the best out of him. So let's see what Lukaku does with Conte this season in Napoli. All right. And then I believe this is the final one, guys. The Lego Dude says, hot take. Bar Lecusa one season wonders. Uh, Lego Dude, I think it's a very harsh. I don't agree with this take. Um, now, here's the thing, though. It depends how Leverkusen, because Leverkusen just earlier today, they smashed Hoffenheim 4 1. So if Leverkusen keeps going this winning streak, then no, they're not one season wonders. And I don't think they are. I just think that one off game, I just think they I just think the pressure was on for them to keep that unbeaten streak and they eventually had to fold. And every team has to lose at some point, right? So for me, like a dude, I don't agree with this take, but maybe maybe they can be. Let let's see what they do at the end of the season in the league. Like if they're like twenty points behind Bayern, then maybe we can have that convo. Or if they do terrible in the Champions League, maybe we can have that conversation. But until then, I don't think they're one season wonders, and I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. So I hope you guys enjoy this video, guys. A very long video, 32 minutes of going through your guys' opinions. Like I said, guys, hope you guys did enjoy. Please run a like and subscribe, of course. And let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And do you guys agree with my analysis on say? And like and also let me know in the comments below if you guys want to see more of this. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.